I'm Alex and I work for Session, an end-to-end -end encrypted messaging application. So this year I've been affected by not one, but two major data leaks. And I'm a pretty cautious and knowledgeable person when it comes to online privacy. So how exactly did this happen? Or really, am I, am I actually getting lucky here, given the amount of data that's being shared online all the time and the amount of leaks that are happening these days? Maybe two is actually not that bad of a number. Now, it got me thinking, can I improve? What recommendations would I give to other people to try and make sure that their information isn't leaked? And I've come up with five key tips to try and stay more private when you're online. Now, some of these tips are gonna delve into the side of security as well, but it's obviously important to keep in mind that these concepts are super closely linked together a lot of the time. So I'm gonna go from number one to number five, probably the easiest and simplest steps at the start, and then at the end, number five, things might start to get a bit more extreme. So number one, try and use a password manager, try and use 2FA when it's available to you. This is a really simple step to try and increase the security of your accounts online. Obviously, you don't want those to be getting breached. A lot of password managers will even notify you if a password of yours has appeared in a data leak somewhere and recommend which passwords might not be strong enough um, that you should probably try and update, especially if that's an account that's super, super important, like you know your bank details or maybe your PayPal or your government logins, things like of that nature. If you wanna get a little bit more intense about it, you could also get a YubiKey or some other kind of hardware access 2FA. Um, there's a lot of criticisms about 2FA and how secure it necessarily is, especially SMS-based 2FA. Um, but if you use a YubiKey, that is a really safe and secure way to do 2FA for your accounts. Tip number two. Have a look at the applications, especially on your mobile device, and check out the permissions. What exactly are those apps accessing? Are they accessing a microphone when there's not really any reason that they would need to? Are they streaming a lot of data or downloading things in the background when you're not actually using the application? It's worth taking a look and checking what information is being stored, what it's accessing, and what it might be sharing with other apps or things on your device as well. If you're on iOS, um, you'll, a lot of the time when you download a new app, you'll be prompted and you would get this option to ask apps not to track. Now, you can also review this in your settings if you want to anytime and try and prevent applications from tracking you across multiple different uh, devices, multiple different applications or accounts that you're using. Tip number three, try and have a look at encrypted alternatives, whether it's your note-taking app, maybe try and find an encrypted notes app which works for you. Same goes for messaging. Messaging is something which is really super sensitive. So get off SMS, get off Facebook Messenger, use something like Session instead, which is gonna protect your conversations and protect that really personal, intimate information. At the same time, you know, like there are some applications which you might not necessarily think about as much. You know, things like uh, health-based apps, like pedometer apps or period tracking apps, it's really valuable to encrypt that information as well because it's got sensitive health data, which obviously you don't want to be sold and traded and shared online or you know leaked because there's some incompetence or something goes on at a company. Um, so even applications which you don't necessarily use every single day or you might not be thinking about, it's worth checking and seeing, hey, is there an encrypted alternative that I could be using instead? Tip number four. Where you can, try and de-Google your life. Try and use free and open source software instead. Don't use Gmail, use Tutanoto or Proton or something like that. Don't use uh, Google Docs. You could try and use CryptPad or something along those lines. Where it's possible, if you can get away from the Google ecosystem, that's really gonna help you out. And the same goes with Android. You know, you can get a de-Googled version of Android. You can get alternative uh, app stores outside of the Play Store. Uh, which is gonna help you avoid all of your information funneling back to Google, as well as supporting you know, free and open source software, which is super beneficial to our whole technology ecosystem. And generally speaking, they're gonna be a lot more privacy preserving than something like Google Tech. And tip number five, this one is a little bit more difficult, um, but it's always worth doing. Try and reduce your focus on centralized applications. Try and reduce your reliance. If you can find a decentralized alternative, that's gonna give you a lot more guarantees about where your data is being stored, the transparency of that data, whether it's gonna be deleted, who has control of it, who is even able to you know, conduct surveillance or pry into your personal matters. 
You know, for example, instead of using something like WhatsApp, which is centralized and owned by Meta, you could use something like Session, which is decentralized. So no one person has access to all of that information and data leaks become much more difficult and much more uh, uncommon, completely, you know, almost impossible really for your messaging data to be leaked from Session in any major way. So those are the five major tips that we recommend to try and increase your privacy. But overall, I think, you know, if you're not sure where to start, take a think about what the technology is that you rely on the most. So is it maybe that you use note-taking apps a lot because um, you use it for work or maybe you use messaging apps every single day? I would focus on trying to go through this list and find some kind of alternative which can help reduce your reliance on insecure or non-private software and technology where possible. So, you know, try and find a messaging app that's encrypted, that's decentralized, that doesn't rely on Google services, for example, or, you know, the same for a note-taking app or a documents app or any other software that you rely on really heavily, try and find the alternatives for those. That's always a really good place to start and then work your way down to the stuff that you rely on less and use less often. So that's everything for today. Thanks for tuning in. I'm really interested to hear what your privacy tips are as well. So leave a comment down below if you have any that you think that I should be using to try and reduce the, the likelihood that I'm gonna suffer from more data leaks. We'll see you next time.